Okay, so let's look at modulation and multiplexing, how we can actually modulate our signal to be able to send it over our transmission medium. Okay, so overall we're looking at data, audio, video and images and really looking at the data infrastructure for uh, their communication. So the two main mechanisms that we have typically with inside a communication channel is what's called frequency division multiplexing. So what we really want is to be able to allow uh, several uh, providers to be able to communicate at the same time all on a shared uh, communication channel. So one way to do this is that we have uh, different frequencies that we would use and then our receiver would tune into the specific frequencies. And this is known as frequency division multiplexing. We split our bandwidth up into a number of bands that we have and then allow our senders to be able to use uh, one of these bands. So it's very typical in AM, radio, FM, TV and, and so on. Another method that we have is what's called time division multiplexing. And with time division multiplexing, we allow each of the communicating part parties a certain time period to be able to transmit their data. So what we often do is we, we take all our sources and then we multiplex them together into a single uh, bit stream and then at the other end we demultiplex them. Uh, one of the most traditional methods of sending signals is to use what's called amplitude modulation. With this we have a carrier frequency and we can see the carrier frequency on the signal here. Okay, and the carrier frequency is the signal that uh, the receiver tunes into. And then what we have is our signal uh, frequency there. Our signal is then reinforced as an amplitude on top of our carrier. So you can see here, there's the signal there, and our carrier is here. And we define the ratio of M, which is the, the amplitude of the signal, as a ratio to the amplitude of the carrier. So obviously, if this value is large, then we see a large variation, such as this one. If it's small, we see a small variation, such as that one. Okay, so that's uh, amplitude modulation. So here's an example of amplitude modulation. So we can see our carrier frequency is in here. In this case, it's 10 hertz. We should be able to see that there are 10 cycles with inside one second there. And then reinforced on top of that, we see, in this case, just a sine wave of our signal. So this is one hertz. So if we count between here and here, then we should see one cycle with inside one second. Okay. And we're also going for a, a ratio of 0.5. Okay, so uh, the amplitude of our signal is half the amplitude of our carrier. And then what we see is that uh, we see our, a strong fundamental frequency around our, our carrier, which is around 10 hertz. And then we see on either side a uh, mirrored uh, in this case, 1 hertz away, which is 9 hertz, and then at 11 hertz. Okay, so the signal uh, is, we end up with the fundamental frequency minus the, the frequency of the signal, and also for that to be a, a plus. Okay, so this is a, a common uh, sort of characteristic of our EM wave frequency response. So we'll have a little look to see what that looks like. Okay, so here's a here's a plot here. Just let me zoom in a little bit. There we go. Okay, so this is AM. So we can change the the carrier frequency and it should change the frequency there. So we we'll just make it a little bit higher. So we can see there there's the 10 and then there's the 5 and the 15. So now if we change it to 20 hertz with a signal of 5, then we can see it's at 20 and at 25 and at 15. Okay, 
So a characteristic is for this the frequency to be both uh, shown below the frequency, the fundamental frequency, and also af after it. And then we can vary the M volume. So we'll just increase that to 0.5 and we should be able to see. We now have a stronger signal frequency here, uh, a stronger signal frequency as opposed to the carrier. And there's our amplitude there. Okay, so we can try different examples in, in here. So this one is a, a frequency of 10 hertz, signal frequency of 5 hertz as AM. So that's an FM one. So we'll do our AM one. So this is 10, 1 hertz and 0.5. Okay. And so frequency modulation is the modulation that we can actually use. With this, we vary the frequency. So we can see here we have low frequency and then it's increasing here and then decreasing again. So this is really adding on our waveform and then the amplitude of the waveform will vary the frequency of the wave. So when, when we're at a peak there, we might see a faster change and then when we're done at the negative there, we might see a slower change. So again, what we'll do is to be able to lock in on the fundamental uh, carrier frequency. And then we would pick off the frequencies uh, from that. So again, as we can see in this case, we fold our frequencies back into the spectrum. So we'll just have a look at that there. Okay, so we're going to have a look at uh, 10 hertz. So we try FM. And we'll have a look at 10 hertz and 1 hertz signal. And if we have a look, see, uh, again, we see this folding back on either side of the fundamental. So if we try 5, we should be able to see a larger variation with inside our, our frequency. And again, we see this 10, and then there's the 5 and the 15 around it. Okay, so FM is, is, a, is a good method of uh, of creating our, our modulation for our signal. So now let's have a look at uh, how digital signals are actually sent. So often what we have is we have a communication channel which uh, cannot accept uh, pure digital pulses. So one way for it, us to be able to send digital pulses over a limited bandwidth is to is to modulate them, uh, typically with these three methods. So we have amplitude shift keying, uh, phase shift keying, and frequency shift keying. So we can see a one here is represented by a certain amplitude, and then a zero with no amplitude. With phase shift keying, we change the phase for a change in the, the binary value. So we can see the change is happening here. In this case, we're changing by 180 degrees phase uh, to go completely the other way. And then with frequency, we can have two frequencies in this case. This is a higher frequency for a 1 and the lower frequency for a, a 0. OK, so let's see what our frequency response looks like. So now what happens is that uh, we can see that we're not discrete anymore. So the frequency is dis is uh, is dis has a discontinuity, so that we don't end up with our 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 spikes of frequency, but we end up with a continuous uh, waveform. So we'll have a look at ESK, which is amplitude shift keying. Okay, so there's our amplitude shift keying. We'll just vary the frequency of the carrier to ten. And we'll have a look to see what happens to our frequency response. And you can see here it sits around 10 there with uh, lobes on either side of it.
So the next method that we have is frequency shift keying. In this case, uh, we can see that uh, we have two frequencies at 10 and also at 20 hertz. So there's the 10, the 10 hertz is here. And the, sorry, the 20 hertz is here. And 10 hertz is here. Okay, that's the 20 and then that's the 10. So what we end up with is that we see a 10 hertz here and we see a 20 hertz there with our lobes uh, around it. So again, we'll have a look at that. And what we should see... Okay, this is our frequency shift keying. Okay, so there's our 10 and 20. So what I've done here is to be able to create uh, a carry a frequency of 15 and then we have two frequencies around that which are 5 hertz left. So if I move it up to 20 we should see 15 and 25. There's 15 and there's 25. Okay, so that's frequency shift keying where we vary the frequency to be related to our bits that we want to send. And then finally we have a phase shift keying. We can see here as the change of bits one one zero one zero. So in this case, what happens is that we end up with uh, our frequency really based around our carrier. So in this case, it was fifteen, but we end up with these lobes to do with the discontinuity that's caused when we change the phase. Okay, so we'll have a look at our phase shift keying. Okay, so there we go. So it's around 15, but we get lots of these side lobes. And we just move it up to 20 hertz as a carrier. I see it's faster. But now we've moved up to 20 hertz as our, as the, as the main peaks around that. It's not actually at the 20, but it's just, it's just around it. And then what we can do is that we can actually create what's called the emery uh, modulation. With this, we can actually create multiple amplitudes and multiple phases. So on here we have four, four amplitudes, different uh, amplitudes of the wave, and we can have a number of phases. So we've got one, two, three, uh, we've got 12 phases overall, and uh, a number of amplitudes. So this then gives us 16 different places on our, with our phases and our amplitudes. So we should be able to send now four bits at a time, uh, because each of the four bits can be represented by one of the amplitudes and also with one of the, the phases then. So this is often a technique that's used to send multiple bits uh, over the line for a single symbol that we send. So let's look at uh, carrier frequencies. So with carrier frequencies, what we have is that we have a certain frequency, and that frequency also has a certain wavelength. If we were to view the wave, then the actual frequency is the amount of cycles per second, and the wavelength will be the physical length of the wave as it appears as, a, as an electrical signal. So the calculation that we have is that uh, we have V is equal to F lambda, or lambda is equal to V uh, over F. So uh, V is the velocity of the wave. In free space, this is three times 10 to the eight meters per second. Uh, but then uh, with inside a medium, a dense medium, then we calculate it in terms of uh, uh, C divided by the square root of epsilon R. So when we're traveling through something like glass, then uh, the speed of the wave will actually slow down. But in free space, we'll, we'll use this. So we calculate the, the wavelength in terms of that. So often here we talk about the frequency, and then up to here we talk about the wavelength, because the frequencies become very large here, and the wavelengths become very, uh, very long here. So we go from radio waves, that's about 30 hertz to 300, up to microwaves, 300 gigahertz, down to 300 meg, 
and then for infrared we start to go from 300 gig up to what 70 and nanometers so these are normally defined with their frequency and then we move into here we're looking at uh, uh, millimeter waves here centimeters down into nanometers and then picometers so we move up to ultraviolet x-ray gamma rays and cosmic rays and with inside the radio waves there are a number of uh, bands that we look at uh, so we have uh, ultra high frequencies uh, this uh, is focused on let me uh, erase that so the ultra high frequencies are where we would typically see our wireless communications our 80211 wireless so in here we have 802.11b, which runs about 2.4 gig, and also around 5 gigahertz. Okay, so that that's the frequencies we use for our typical wireless uh, area ne uh, wireless networks. Then below that we start to look at uh, we start to look at things like TV here. Uh, AM and FM radio around here we're looking at uh, long wave radio and then around here it's looking at very low low frequencies so up here we start to look at what are called millimeter waves and these are used in typically in line of sight communications Another concept that we have is the concept around circuit switching. Circuit switching involves creating a virtual circuit between two nodes or packet switching. Packet switching involves uh, where a packet can actually take any route through the network that it actually wants uh, as long as it gets from, from one place to the next. Okay, so that's been an introduction to modulation and multiplexing.